It's not Route 66, but on Pleasant Street in Epping, New Hampshire, American Junkies will take you on a trip down memory lane. The shop is a picker's paradise, and that's because it's run, stocked, and enjoyed by a bunch of pickers. It has to be old and original to, to come in the store. Primarily old Americana. It has to be stuff that our grandfathers and great-grandfathers manufactured in the day. Tim Barker loves a good hunt. He's been searching for antiques for years, building his own personal collector's collection. I've been collecting things for probably 20 years. It hasn't always been the signs. It, I think it started with the fishing lures and fishing because I'm big into fishing and hunting, so I enjoyed that. But probably 20 years. As I got older and I had the funding to buy back my childhood, let's say, or think, I, it got a little deeper. So I had the funding to be able to do it. As his collections got a bit out of hand, he started to sell some things off, turning to the internet. As I started networking online and finding pieces from people online, I met a lot of local collectors and other people, and through that I met a lot of cool pickers that actually go out and pick the countryside, finding the stuff. And uh, we built friendships over doing that, and then they started coming to the house and bringing pieces that they had found, which was kind of cool. So he bought a building, cleaned it up, and reached out to those antique dealers and pickers in the area to help him fill it. Essentially, it took all of us to do it, you know, but we wanted to have a place where people could come and find a lot of these items in one spot instead of traveling or having to deal with going online. And the idea is to create a new age of antiquing by getting a different generation of pickers to work together and build a palace of originality with Americana memorabilia literally dripping from the ceiling. Anything unique and um, that displays some type of advertising of some sort, I just, I think is super cool. It takes you to a whole nother era. So before, it's almost like before the cool fonts and the cool colors, you went to the 20s and 30s, it was wood. So there wasn't a lot where you could get that sheen into a sign. So the, the, their strategy back then, if you would, was smaltz paint, which essentially they'd take a paint and they'd mix it with glass and they would apply it. So now when the car is pulled in, at least there was some glitter and some glam going on with the sign. Uh, so this is probably my favorite in the shop. The building is made up of close to 20 different dealers, all adding their own personal touch, expertise, and collectibles to the space. I like nautical collectibles. I like Americana, anything that was useful, you know, things from the you know early 1900s, the 1800s, um, rustic things, primitives. This item here was actually, it's, it's as dry four quart measure. And if you look in here, it was actually made in Wilton, New Hampshire. So I like local things too. That has history and it's still in the state. Most of the items that I have here are uh, antique. They're older, uh, mostly 40s, 50s, 60s. There are a few pieces that are uh, older than that. Um, yeah, mostly the reels and a few of the rods. This is a four-piece rod. This actually will go to 12 feet long. But look at the size of the reel. It's very, very small. So some people will be, my grandfather owned a mobile station. So they're chasing mobile. You know, I want a mobile sign. I want to, before you know it, they're building a little mobile gas station in their backyard. And yeah, a lot, a lot of people are looking for one specific thing. Others are chasing different colors. Um, but it varies, there's a lot of different people that are into different things for different reasons. Antiquing is my life, um, you know, it's, it becomes a lifestyle, you know. We try and save things. I try and rescue, you know, things that I see that are either gonna be damaged or aren't gonna be well preserved because you don't get another chance to, to you know, save it. This is one of my favorites, honestly. This is an early, early coat rack. Um, I got this uh, out of a random pick the guy had uh, gotten out of a huge estate sale. Every time I come here, I see people coming through the door selling stuff to Tim or the other dealers, you know? And that's really cool, you know, because you don't always get that. A lot of the uh, antique stores now, they turn into junk shops. And uh, I'm talking like things that are very low end here. You're going to find a range, you know, variety of things that are, you know, killer, you know, man cave stuff.
I like it because it's more of like a, a gallery setting with higher end, hand picked, hand catered items. I specialize in American advertising pre-1970. Um, my favorite would be in the 1890s era, turn of the century. Um, this is something I just brought in today. And this is in 1890s, turn of the century, sidewalk, peanut roaster, all copper, um, original glass, original um, hot label, maker's mark from Buffalo, New York. Tim and the other pickers and collectors say they love seeing who comes in the door, learning about their collections, and helping them to fill a void. I'm buying all the time. <laughs> so we do buy a lot of things. A lot of things come walking in the door. We're always willing to buy and put things in the right place. But I'm also a collector, so I like buying things. Buying, selling, and bringing vintage Americana back to life, one pick at a time. Putting the pieces in the right places means the most to us. You know, whether it's a collector, or a new collector, or a young child for the right reason, I think that's, that was rewarding for us.